Gamescom. I hope you had a good lunch. And just before we are kicking off the next talk, there is an, a short announcement. There will be a parrot on OpenVMS BOF this evening at 6 p.m. in the Cafe Extrablatt. I guess it will be about Parrot and how to run it on OpenVMS or how Parrot can support OpenVMS better. Yeah. And now I hand over the mic to Lars Dikov. Okay. Ah. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. Hello, hello. <clears throat> I'm Daxin from Vienna PM and I'm going to talk about packaging basics. Uh, don't expect to learn too much because it's a beginner track and uh, uh, also because of the breadth of the topic I can barely scrape at the surface. But we, before we start, get started, a job advertisement. My employer wants you to know that we have two open positions, namely for a software developer uh, for web programming, the screen or web designer. So if you're interested, come chat with us. So. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, mostly about practical stuff, which is more suited to a, a workshop, but uh, we can also learn about uh, how to use the code to solve interesting problems. Okay, uh, all, of, all of the st stuff I'm going to tell about is mostly standard solutions that has been used for, for years, if not uh, already decades, and uh, you shouldn't deviate too much unless it doesn't do what you want, so don't take it too seriously. There's always more than one way to do it. Uh, and uh, also, since we're talking about software, which serves another software, you know, it has not a purpose for itself, but just, uh, uh, for example, ex uh, installation or something like that. Um, concentrate uh, uh, where you get the most uh, out, of, out of your time. So don't take quality too serious. A quick hack that works is better than uh, spending too much time on it. Uh, you can copy and paste examples. Um, this is how all the people do it, uh, so don't be afraid to do, it, to do so. I'm assuming that you're going to run a modern Perl, so 5.10 is old, old, old stable, meanwhile, <laughs> out of support already, but you should have at least that, uh, because a couple of uh, Various bugs exist in the 5.8 and even earlier um, uh, versions. So try to run the most modern Perl that you can get. Uh, okay. So um, I'm afraid I won't have time for questions at the end, uh, depending how fast I can go. Uh, if you if you want to do something with the tool chain about installation stuff, packaging. Um, come into the IRC channel toolchain or pick the appropriate mailing list uh, so that more people can benefit from it. I'm also uh, available later on, on the hallway. So, okay. Also, I want to point out some related talks. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Alberto will talk about module build and how to extend it uh, auto, autoconf style. And right after, JJ will also talk about uh, dependencies. So this this comes into the whole topic of, uh, um, but I'm just going to talk about the aspects of pack packaging. Okay, the first problem. Uh, I, oh, if I, if I would have a penny for every time I have written a beginner's question like that, I would be a rich man. Uh, but actually installing from, um, from your script at runtime uh, does not work in the general case, so you can't do that. Namely, uh, it's because of the privilege separation. The user or the role who uh, runs the script most of the time is not the same role that installs the script. Uh, so you, you should not do it this way. You can't just put uh, Zulu CPAN, my dependency, in your script uh, and expect it to work everywhere. Uh, instead, you must use an installer tool, and uh, probably the most of you have already seen how this works. You can open up any uh, um, CPAN distribution and have a look at the files, how this is solved, and uh, I will introduce 
how to declare the dependencies, and uh, then it gets taken care of automatically at its downtime. Uh, the most venerable is uh, Xtutils MakeMaker, and it's uh, existing for a long, long time. So you load the module and it exports a function, which you give a number of uh, parameters, which are all neatly documented. The important stuff is here. The dependencies are called prerequisites, and you can list uh, the names and the version numbers. And a CPAN client will automatically follow the stuff. This is a lie. Uh, it's not quite the truth, but uh, close enough. And uh, and install time. Um, install these before your dis distribution is installed. And so uh, you can be reasonably certain that when someone runs the distribution, all the dependencies will also be available. Okay. The replacement for Xtutils MakeMaker is module build, and it has a, a slightly different API. Uh, this is object-based, so you instantiate a new thing, and uh, in the constructor you can pass a number of parameters which are also later exposed on the, ad, on the object as accessors. And uh, again, all of this is uh, the meaning of uh, this stuff is available in the documentation. Uh, we, again, we have the requirements and uh, by the way, these code examples are uh, from real existing code from, you can have a look in my uh, GitHub or pause account and find the scripts again. Don't be shy to steal from it. Uh, yeah. And in the end, uh, once, this, once the object is constructed, you call the method uh, create build script and then you have a build script and then you can call the usual incantation, build, build test, build install. And with execute, let's make, make a, the uh, write make file uh, function will write out a make file and you will call then make, make test, make install. The usual thing. Okay, and then we also have a popular module build, uh, module install. Ah. Which has a different approach and also a different purpose. Uh, namely, uh, this is just a small wrapper around uh, Xtutils uh, MakeMaker, but with a much simplified API, you're not supposed to uh, to be able to extend this. Uh, you usually use a module install for, for all the simple modules that just need to declare some dependencies and not do anything fancy stuff in the, in, in the install step at the end. So again, requirements listed, uh, and the build requirements which are used in the testing step, for example. Uh, or need to be even available before the module, uh, before the um, makefile PL, which is the script runs. Uh, the different approach is uh, that you do not depend on, on module install when it is installed before, because this is not a core module. Instead, um, uh, when you first run the makefile PL, which depends on uh, module install, you get a copy that is bundled in the ink directory. Ink is for include. And when you, when you bundle up your uh, uh, distribution to, load it up to, C, to upload it to CPAN, a copy of, uh, a recent copy of uh, module install is bundled in the distribution and then at uh, install time, this gets run. So the user, the end user who uses your, wants to uh, install your distribution does not need uh, his own copy. And um, since you cannot rely on the user to have a um, recent version of module install, you also need to re re release more frequently. I think the recommendation is on the order of a couple of months on, uh, till about a year so that old bugs in module install do not linger too much. Uh, so you can, as I said earlier, you can copy all this code from, from other distributions or also use the module starter module, which comes with a small script, module dash starter, when you run it, you will get a skeleton uh, with all the usual files which are appropriate for distribution and raise your quality rankings and uh, you can copy paste your code into the skeleton and then have a nice working distribution for installing purposes. Okay, now which one to pick? Uh, um, the opinions differ of the experts. 
uh, Schwerner is the maintainer of Xtutels MakeMake, and he says, it's too old, don't use it anymore. Then the people who work and maintain what you build say, ah, that's too complicated, don't use that anymore. <laughs> so that leaves us with module install, right? Uh, but that's also not a, a good idea because we won't get any updates anymore uh, because Adam Kennedy is not, not available anymore. Uh, by the way, chance to uh, take over. And also, module install is not easily uh, uh, extendable for, um, for a beginner since this is also just based for, uh, on Xtutels make, make my, make Maker and you have to understand make and uh, shell and all the other stuff instead of just writing per code. So my recommendation is uh, if you can't wait for a follow-up to module build to, to arrive, use module build now because uh, your per programmers and eventually uh, with the help of, uh, of the debugger you can find out which code paths and so are important and it's not that complicated once you get the hang of it. Uh, this is also one purpose of my talk to show you some code examples. Okay, next problem. Uh, CPAN always reinstalls the module. You, you have, you, you tell CPAN, pa copy, pa paste a long series of uh, dependencies in, uh, in the command line and uh, you repeat it and uh, CPAN fetches, uh, no, and try, tries to reinstall your module all the time. How does it come? Uh, the module, some of the modules and distributions do not have a version number, so this gets coerced to zero, and zero is smaller than what the actual version number is. So a client would always try to uh, to reinstall the module, and the solution is to give every module in the distribution a version number. And uh, this is most practical if you uh, if every module stays at stays in step at the same version number, and also you give the distribution itself this version number. And my recommendation is. Uh, out of years of experience that this scheme is the best, um, separated with one uh, decimal dot, then a major version at the beginning and uh, th exactly three digits afterwards. Uh, it must always be zero padded at the beginning and at the end. Now, how did I ar arrive at this conclusion? This is all fully compatible with all the style, uh, all the advice that has been collected over the years. Uh, by the way, did you know that we have now strict version rules since 5.12? This is uh, not something that is uh, known too much. Uh, also, two policies and per critic uh, have a say about how version numbers should look like and the scheme I introduced in the slide before matches all these uh, rules or all this advice. Uh, also, it prevents uh, some common problems. Um, you probably have seen this before, because in Perl, in Perl's versioning scheme, this is actually 1.900, and this is 1.100. This is clearly smaller than this one, even if someone would not expect it from just looking at it. And you can get rid of this problem by, ex by always specifying three digits because uh, one dot is separator for a thousandth of a version. Okay. Also, if you avoid version objects, you know, from version.pm, you avoid this ugly v prefix in the distro package name. Okay, next. Okay. So, next problem. Um, you have some files which, which uh, you want to ship in your distro, like data files, geographical stuff, for instance. And uh, one possibility is you put it in the lib directory relative to the library uh, path which you are using. And then you use the uh, special uh, built-in uh, token underscore underscore file underscore underscore, which uh, returns the value, uh, which is the string of the path of the current uh, library file. And from there, you can use path manipulation and uh, go up a directory and then down there and arrive at the data file where you put it relative to your library path. But uh, I don't like this solution too much because, uh, you know, this is a, a pattern and uh, patterns are supposed to be bundled up in the library and this has been done. 
namely file share deer. If you're using execute that's make maker, you file share deer install at configure time. And appropriately for the other uh, uh, tool installs. And at the runtime, when your program is running, you use a file share deer to uh, access the, uh, the data files. This goes by default in the share directory uh, of your distribution. You know, you have a bin directory, a lib directory, and something in the root. Just put it in the share directory, and by default, it will do the right thing. Good. Next problem. Uh, okay, you want to diddle with a use lib path at compile time. For example, you have you, you have to rely on an external tool, and you have, can't have any influence about it, so you have to solve this problem a bit of uh, at the Perl side. It's a real thing, a real problem I have solved for someone. And uh, uh, you can do this by rewriting uh, the file while it is being installed. And uh, to do this, we use just an additional module build step. OK, the important stuff. We have an example program, binfubar. It uh, loads the library libfubar. And for installation purposes, the module build PL file and a subclass. Well, build from Ord, so, and uh, the the program looks like looks like that, and this is the path we want to change. Okay, so now how how looks the uh, build PL file instead of module build itself? We're using a subclass, and this is in the fnord PM file available from the ink path. Uh, but since this is a proper subclass, we just use the same API, uh, create an instance. <coughs> and eventually call the cre um, create build uh, script, which I mentioned earlier. And the important stuff is this additional build step. It says we want to change something in the bin directory. And the installer, uh, the, the module build subclass itself looks like that. Uh, we are inheriting from it and then overwrite the process bin files, which the step edit. And then just something hacky, uh, make the blib directory where the file has just been copied, uh, uh, make it writable. Then use Perl as a poor man's templating system and exchange use lib dummy with something else in the, in the copied uh, lib directory and also print out for, uh, yeah, for verbose purposes and uh, actually call this Perl command. So, so and then <coughs> the um, the library thing doesn't do anything, and now we're going to install it uh, just in a temporary directory so we do not pollute our um, Perl with some dummy package and going to install it. And now here's the print that was put in the, um, in the install step. And you, you will see that the dummy directory is now exchanged for the uh, appropriate directory, and the files are going to be installed. And if we uh, look in the blib directory where the file ju just has been copied, we will see that dummy has been exchanged by the proper path. And we are going to, uh, to going to the installed path and run the program. It works as expected. So this is how you would work with module build. Uh, next problem. How much time is left? Two minutes, OK. Uh, again, a module build uh, recipe. You have direct in you have files in the lib directory which do not, have, do not have any file extension. Module build by default only processes uh, files which have extensions and uh, it has some appropriate hooks already for for, exa for um, PM files, for libraries. And uh, this is the reason why uh, at build element which I used in previous recipe does not work. Uh, as, uh, because of the file extensions, uh, but we can uh, override the already existing process lib files, and uh, we do it like that. Again, use a, mm, mm, <coughs> use a subclass, and uh, at, at the lib build element, even though it already exists as a, as a process step, and then in the code, we are going to iterate over the lib directory all the files. So the code which usually gets called to, um, to process the lib files is completely replaced by this one here. 
So, and then uh, we're just copying um, the install step from the existing code, copy of modified, and this gets put in the lib directory. So instead of just processing PM files, we're going to process every file with uh, this module. And that's it already, okay. Uh, okay, just in time. Okay, the rest I have to skip, but it's not much. Uh, you can talk about uh, this with me later. Thank you for your attention.